Philippoimen Greek, Philippoimen, Philippoimen, 253 BC, Megalopolis 183 BC, Messene was a skilled Greek general and statesman, who was Achaean strategos on eight occasions. From the time he was appointed as strategos in 209 BC, Philippoimen helped turn the Achaean League into an important military power in Greece. He was called the last of the Greeks by an anonymous Roman. Topic. Early life The son of Crogus of Megalopolis, his father died early in his life. He was then adopted by an important citizen of Megalopolis, Cleander. Philippoimen was educated by academic philosophers Ectemus and Demophanes. Both were Megapolitans, who had helped to depose previous tyrants of Megalopolis, Sicyon and Cyrene. Thus, he was inculcated with notions of freedom and democracy. Philippoimen strove to emulate the 4th century BC Theban general and statesman, Epaminondas. Philippoimen believed that as a public servant, personal virtue was at all times a necessary condition. So Philippoimen wore humble garments for the rest of his life, spurning any expensive adornments. Topic: <laughs> Battle of Megalopolis. Philippoimen first came to the attention of key Greek politicians when he helped defend Megalopolis against the Spartan king Cleomenes III in 223 BC. Cleomenes III had seized Megalopolis. Philippoimen was amongst the first defending the city. During the battle, Philippoimen lost his horse and he was wounded. Nevertheless, he remained involved in the battle until the end. His actions helped give the citizens of Megalopolis enough time to evacuate the city. Battle of Celesia The king of Macedonia, Antigonus III Doson was keen to restore Macedonian influence in the Peloponnese for the first time in almost two decades. In 224 BC, he signed an alliance with the Achaeans, Boeotians, Thessalians and the Acarnanians. With his rear secured by treaties, Antigonus invaded the Peloponnese and drove the Spartans out of Argos, taking Orchomenus and Mantinea in the process. When he advanced against Laconia, however, Antigonus found that Cleomenes had blocked all the mountain passes except for one. It was there, near Celesia, that Cleomenes waited with his army. Philippoimen commanded a cavalry force, which included soldiers from Megalopolis. He was supported by Illyrian infantry. When the latter entered into the battle, they were surrounded by the enemy. So Philippoimen launched his own attack. While his forces suffered many casualties, the surprised Spartan forces fled. In the encounter, Philippoimen's horse fell and he was wounded by a javelin. Yet he continued to fight behind the enemy's lines. In the end the Spartan forces were massacred by the Macedonians and their allies and Cleomenes was forced to flee to Egypt. As the leader of the Achaeans, Philippoimen's actions impressed Antigonus III. Topic. Cavalry commander He subsequently spent ten years from 221 BC in Crete as a mercenary captain. Returning to mainland Greece in 210 BC, Philippoimen was appointed commander of the cavalry in the Achaean League. In the same year, in one of the battles associated with the First Macedonian War between Macedonia and the Roman Republic, Philippoimen faced Damophantus, whose army was composed of Aetolians and Elans, near the Larissa River on the border of Elis. During the battle, Damophantus charged directly against Philippoimen with his spear. Bravely, Philippoimen didn't retreat, but waited with his lance, which he mortally thrust into Damophantus's chest. Immediately, the enemy fled from the battlefield. By this action, Philippoimen's fame increased across Greece. Topic: The Battle of Mantinea. Philippoimen was appointed strategos of the Achaean League in 209 BC. Philippoimen used his position to modernize and increase the size of the Achaean army and updated the soldiers' equipment and battle tactics. His efforts to make the Achaeans an effective fighting force bore fruit a couple of years later. In the years following the defeat of the Spartan king Cleomenes III at the Battle of Celesia, Sparta experienced a power vacuum that eventually led to the Spartan kingship being bestowed on a child, Pelops, for whom Machonidas ruled as regent. 
The Battle of Mantinea was fought in 207 BC between the Spartans led by Machonidas and the Achaean League, whose forces were led by Philippoimen. The Achaeans defeated the Spartans. In the battle, Philippoimen defeated and killed the Spartan ruler Machonidas in one-on-one -on -one combat. Afterward, the Achaeans erected at Delphi a bronze statue which captured the fight between Machonidas and Philippoimen. With his victory at Mantinea, Philippoimen was able to go on to capture Tegia, and then move with his army as far as the Eurotas River. Topic. The rise of Nabus of Sparta Following Machonidas' death, Nabus, a nobleman from the royal house of the Eurypontids, a descendant of King Demaratus, rose to power in Sparta and became the new regent for Pelops. Nabus soon overthrew Pelops. Under Nabus, Sparta continued to trouble the Peloponnese. In 205 BC, Philip V of Macedon made a temporary peace, the peace of Phoenice, with Rome on favorable terms for Macedonia, thus ending the First Macedonian War. After the peace, Nabus went to war against the Achaean League. However, Philippoimen was able to expel Nabus from Messene. Philippoimen was appointed strategos for the Achaean League between 201 and 199 BC. In 201 BC, Nabus invaded and captured Messene. However, the Spartans were forced to retreat when the Achaean League army under Philippoimen intervened. Nabus' forces were decisively defeated at Tegea by Philippoimen and Nabus was forced to check his expansionist ambitions for the time being. Philippoimen returns to Crete The Cretan city of Gortina then asked for Philippoimen's help. So in 199 BC Philippoimen returned to Crete again as a mercenary leader. Philippoimen had to change his tactics as the fighting on the island was more in the style of guerrilla warfare. Nonetheless, with Philippoimen's experience, he was able to defeat his enemies. Philippoimen spent six years in Crete. In the meantime, Nabus took advantage of Philippoimen's absence, laying siege to Megalopolis for a lengthy period. Nabus also acquired the important city of Argos from Philip V of Macedon, as the price of his alliance with the Macedonians. Nabus then defected to the Romans in the expectation of being able to hold on to his conquest. In 196 BC, Roman general and pro-consul Titus Quinctius Flamininus accused the Spartan ruler, Nabus, of tyranny, took Gythium in Laconia and forced Nabus to surrender Argos. After checking the ambitions of the Spartan tyrant, Nabus, the Roman forces under Flamininus withdraw in 194 BC from Greece. With the Romans no longer having a military presence in Greece, the dominant powers in the region were the Kingdom of Macedon, the Aetolians, the strengthened Achaean League and a weakened Sparta. The Aetolians, who had opposed the Roman intervention in Greek affairs, incited the Spartan leader, Nabus, to retake his former territories and regain his influence in Greek affairs. Philippoimen's return as Achaean League strategos Returning to the Greek mainland as strategos in 193 BC, Philippoimen was appointed strategos for a second time to lead the fight against Nabus. In 192 BC, Nabus attempted to recapture the Laconian coastline. The Achaeans responded to Sparta's renewed interest in recovering lost territory by sending an envoy to Rome with a request for help. In response, the Roman Senate sent the Praetor Attilius with a navy, as well as an embassy headed by Flamininus. Not waiting for the Roman fleet to arrive, the Achaean army and navy headed towards Gythium under the command of Philippoimen. The Achaean fleet under Tiso was defeated by the Spartan fleet. On land, the Achaeans were unable to defeat the Spartan forces outside Gythium and Philippoimen retreated to Tegea. When Philippoimen re-entered Laconia for a second attempt, his forces were ambushed by Nabus, but nevertheless Philippoimen managed to gain a victory over the Spartan forces. Philippoimen's plans for capturing Sparta itself were put on hold at the request of the Roman envoy, Flaminius, after his arrival in Greece. In return, Nabus decided, for the moment, to accept the status quo. <laughs> Topic. The subjugation of Sparta. Nabus then appealed to the Aetolians for help. They sent 1,000 cavalry to Sparta under the command of Alexamenus. However, the Aetolians murdered Nabus and temporarily occupied Sparta. 
The Aetolian troops seized the palace and set about looting the city, but the inhabitants of Sparta were able to rally and force them to leave the city. But Philippoimen took advantage of the Aetolian treachery and entered Sparta with his Achaean army. Now in full control of Sparta, Philippoimen forced Sparta to become a member state of the Achaean League. Sparta's entry into the League raised the problem of how to deal with all of the Spartans exiled by the social revolutionary regimes that had dominated Sparta for a number of years. Philippoimen wanted to restore only those Spartans who were willing to support the League. This meant that he adopted an uncompromising hostility to traditional Spartan concerns. In 188 BC, Philippoimen entered northern Laconia with his army and a group of Spartan exiles. His army demolished the wall that the former tyrant of Sparta, Nabus, had built around Sparta. Philippoimen then restored Spartan citizenship to the exiles and abolished Spartan law and its education system, introducing Achaean law and institutions in their place. Sparta's role as a major power in Greece ended, while the Achaean League became the dominant power throughout the Peloponnese. Philippoimen's final years These actions provoked opposition even from Philippoimen's supporters in Sparta. As a result, his opponents in Sparta appealed directly to the Roman Senate, which repeatedly suggested solutions to the disagreements, all of which Philippoimen and his supporters rejected. In fact, Philippoimen and his supporters refused to recognize any Roman role in Achaean internal affairs as they argued that Rome had previously recognized the Achaean League's independence through a formal treaty. This aggressive attitude towards Sparta and towards Rome split Achaean politics. However, Philippoimen died before these matters were resolved. In 183 BC, Dinocrates, who strongly opposed Philippoimen, encouraged Messene to revolt against the League. After Dinocrates announced that he would capture Colonies, Philippoimen decided that he needed to subdue the rebellion. In the ensuing battle, Philippoimen found himself behind the enemy's lines and was captured by the Messenians after his horse threw him. He was then invited to drink poison to allow him to have what was then regarded as an honorable death. On hearing of his death, the members of the Achaean League joined forces to capture Messene. With his death, Philippoimen's body was cremated. At his public funeral, the historian Polybius carried the urn with Philippoimen's ashes and later wrote a biography and defended his memory in his histories. Pausanias wrote that after Philippoimen's death, Greece ceased to bear good men. 